Good day everyone and hello. Once again, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Ray Magtarayo. Um, today I will be talking about um, ways or reasons why a person will not be allowed to come, live and work here in Canada. This is what we call inadmissibility. So if you are interested to know if you can move or work here in Canada, please watch the video until the end. If this is your first time to be watching my YouTube channel, I create videos and provide tips on how to immigrate here in Canada. I also just completed my Immigration Practitioner Diploma last January 2020. So if you have any questions or concerns with regards to immigrating here in Canada, please feel free to put that in the comment section below and I will try my best to give you the right answers. Before we continue, please hit the subscribe button below and click the thumbs up and share my videos. And I appreciate that. The IRPA or the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act is one of the laws being followed when it comes to immigrating or working here in Canada. In IRPA Section 33, it actually shows the different ways a person can be inadmissible to Canada meaning a person cannot be allowed to work or immigrate here. So for you to find out if you are inadmissible, please check the IRPA Section 33. One of the grounds for inadmissibility is being a security threat. So people who are actually engaging in act of espionage or engaging or instigating um, subversion by force of any government are considered security threat. People who engage in terrorism or being a member of a terrorist group, people who may be considered a danger um, who will cause um, unsafety to people who live here in Canada can also be considered a security threat and therefore inadmissible to Canada. The second ground of inadmissibility here in Canada is human or international rights violation. So if you're outside of Canada and you engage in this kind of behavior or activities, you will automatically be considered inadmissible or would not be allowed to enter Canada. These acts include torture, violence to people, slaughter, or even genocide. Or if in your country you become a senior official of an army or a military group and the military group has been um, doing activities such as those like torture, genocide, or uh, violating human rights of other people, you will also be considered as inadmissible because of this. People who have been charged of a serious criminality or criminality in Canada or in their home countries are also considered to be inadmissible here in Canada. These crimes could include robbery, manslaughter or murder, human trafficking, organized crime and others. This only applies to people who have been convicted. The health condition of a person can also be a ground for inadmissibility here in Canada. If a person's condition or health condition can cause danger to public health, public safety, or if the person is likely to cause an excessive demand to health care and social services here in Canada, he or she might be considered to be inadmissible on health grounds. So that means people who have been diagnosed of diseases, for example, HIV, cancer, or any other diseases that could cause the reasons that I mentioned earlier could be considered inadmissible due to health grounds. Another ground for inadmissibility is financial reasons. Each 
in every one of us who immigrate here in Canada is expected by the government to sustain ourselves, meaning we would not depend to the Canadian government when it comes to financials. And that is the reason why one of the major requirements to immigrate here in Canada is to have enough sufficient funds. Another ground of inadmissibility is called misrepresentation. Misrepresentation is providing false information or lying about your application to work, immigrate, and live here in Canada. For example, if you are married and in your application form you put single, that is considered misrepresentation. Another example is that you only completed high school graduate, but you fake your document and have a fake diploma of your bachelor's degree and that is also considered a misrepresentation and lastly is the non-compliance of the act yes that is correct if you do not comply or if you violate the terms of the irpa or the immigration and refugee protection act you will automatically be considered inadmissible here in canada and for example, one of the provisions or one of the sections of the IRPA is that if you are on a visitor's visa, you are not allowed to accept employment here in Canada. And if you do so, then you are committing non-compliance of the act. Because of this, you will not be allowed to enter, work, live here in Canada. Another example is overstaying here in Canada. If you come in a visitor's visa, you are allowed, for example, to stay here for six months or depending on the length the visa officer approved your application. If you overstayed and, let's say, stayed in Canada for nine months without extending your visa, that is considered a non-compliance to the Act. And that would actually mean that you would be inadmissible here in Canada. Those are the grounds for inadmissibility. I hope that you learned something from this video. And if you find that this video is helpful to you, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.